Next, we come to Europe. And continental Europe has gone through a massive change because, of course, we have the fall of the Roman Empire. So the map at the time that we're looking at looks something like this. We're starting to see some of the countries or areas that would become countries developing. The kingdom of the Visigoths will become eventually Spain. What is effectively the Franks or the Merovingians will become effectively France and part of Germany. And we have Clovis, who is a famous Merovingian king. He is a Frankish ruler, and his Franks will conquer Gaul in about 500. They start in basically northern Germany. They move into France. They become the French people. Clovis is a ruthless monarch. He killed any possible rival he came across, although he converted to Christianity because he's in the middle of a battle and his wife or one of his wives is Christian. And so he prays to her God, sort of a pragmatic Pascal's wager, this idea that maybe if I pray to her God, this will somehow save me. This will bring me the day, bring me the victory. And what he says is, if you bring me victory, I will convert to Christianity. I will convert my people to Christianity. And so he wins the battle. He converts to Christianity. And he later, later is going to be seen as a hero of Christian orthodoxy. The Franks become effectively the army of the church, the physical power of the church, because, of course, the Romans are gone. They can't rely on that. So they look for other sources. So what we see is these Celtic peoples who become Roman, Christian, barbarian cultures, such as the Frank, Franks, amongst others, merge to create a new European culture. Eventually, the Frankish landowners and these Gallo-Roman landowners intermarried to create a single aristocracy. And that's what we're seeing here, this sort of development of what will become the Holy Roman Empire later on. The Merovingian kings treated all sons equally, which is problematic because in inheritance, they start splitting up kingdoms. So if they have three sons, those three sons will go ahead and have three separate kingdoms. This will weaken them over time. During the same time, we see the Byzantine dynasty still impressive politically and culturally. They're still a powerhouse. We see the Umayyad dynasty in Islam making its way to Spain and up towards France. So this is going to be a serious issue. So this is all happening at the same time. 